So instead of talking about the acceleration due to gravity, which is like here you're on Earth and then you jump up and then the Earth pulls you down, which is a linear acceleration towards the center of the Earth, gravitational forces is also responsible for orbits. So say planets orbiting around the Sun or the Moon orbiting around the Earth. And for the most part, this gives rise to more or less circular motion and in fact more or less uniform circular motion in what we assume as a circular orbit. So that combines what we know in terms of the gravitational force being gmm over r square and also the fact that we're in uniform circular motion so f equals ma where a is equal to AC, which is V squared over R. Sketching out a situation here, in this case, we're, we're talking about the sun, which is my big mass. And there's a small little dot we call Earth. And because of gravitational forces, the sun is pulling the Earth towards it with FG. And likewise, the Earth is pulling the sun towards it. But the sun is very massive, so you don't really see it. So we're going to focus on the Earth system. And this Earth, having some initial sideways velocity, is going to go in a circle around the Sun. And notice that the gravitational force always pulls towards the center of the circle, which gives rise to uniform circular motion. And so if you look at the sum of forces for the Earth, the only force that is acting on the Earth, there's no mg because it is the Earth, but there is an FG from the Sun. It's feeling smaller things from other planets as well, but the Sun is the big mass in our neighborhood and we're gonna feel that the most. So all we have is FG is equal to ME, and A, as we know, because it goes in a uniform circular motion, at least we'll assume that way for simplicity, we have V squared over R. So here we have G, M, S, M, E, over r squared is equal to mev squared over r. And you can see that the mass of the Earth cancels out. And we can use this information to find out actually the mass of the Sun. One catch, uh, the v. This v here we don't really have data for, but we do know one thing. We know that v is given by distance over time in terms of speed. And we also know that it takes the Earth one year to go a full circle around the sun, circumference 2 pi r. This is what we call the period, sometimes you know by big T, how often you complete a full circle, and that will give you some indication of the speed. So if we drag that in there, keeping it as T for now, we basically find that we have this thing r cubed over T square, which is based on all these things. These guys are all constant. And then this, for all the planets in our solar system, will be the same. So that's why Kepler made a bunch of observations and he found that somehow when you work out this ratio with the funny powers, he got a constant number for all the different planets. And that actually forms the basis of Newton's work on universal gravitation, which is our GMM over R squared. It's nice to see how these things all come together. But today, we're mostly interested in figuring out the mass of the sun. So let's dump everything back over. And I guess we have to look up some data. From according to your textbook, the distance between the Earth and the sun, and I'm sure you can look this up with a quick Google search as well. Converting it all to meters, so we add three zeros. And then the period is one year, which needs to be converted into seconds. Again, we have 365 and a quarter days, which gives us some large number of seconds. And since we're using meters and newtons and kilograms and seconds, I won't show you how all the units cancel out, but in the end we will get kilograms as we expect, and it works out to be 1.988957 times 10 to the 30 
ith kilogram. Which, comparing with a quick Google search, is indeed the same number. Quick demonstration of Kepler's law as a great testament to how people were able to spot very peculiar patterns. And then also for Newton in working out a more fundamental understanding with his universal gravity to better explain a pattern that someone else has worked on. And such is the way of physics and science in general.